See, I want everybody to go to heaven. Matter of fact, God wants everybody to go to heaven. But the only reason some people don't go to heaven is because they hate God. It's the sin-loving God-haters, the unrighteous, that don't go to heaven. Now, there's some people that uh, they try and ride the fence. There's some people that, that think, well, I know I do bad things, but God will let me into heaven anyway, right? I, I'll be good enough to heaven, right? Well, the Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. You know what fornicators are, right? People that are getting down with people they're not married to. Fornicators are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. They're going to burn in hell forever. Don't be one of those unrighteous people. Also, nor idolaters. Idolaters aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. Those are the people that worship false gods, like your Catholics and your Mormons and your Jehovah's Witnesses. And even some people, they make a fake God in their mind and they call it Jesus. They have a fake, phony, fraudulent Jesus that isn't, that's not in the Bible. And they say, oh, I love Jesus. They're idolaters. They are unrighteous. And they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Nor the adulterers. Adulterers don't inherit the kingdom of God. Those are folks that want to make time with somebody that uh, they're not even married to. Adulterers aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart already. So you don't even have to do the dirty deed. All you got to do is look at your pornography. Your pornography is adultery. And those unrighteous people aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. They don't love God. They love their flesh. And they're going to die with the flesh. And they're going to burn for, forever in hell because they follow their flesh instead of following Jesus Christ. What a shame. How short-sighted is that? You need to look to the future. You need to be looking to eternity. Don't be short-sighted about the, the temporary pleasures here on earth. You're only going to be around maybe a few decades, maybe. And then you're going to spend eternity one of two places. It's not that hard to figure out, folks. You need to be born again through faith in Jesus, God, faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. <clears throat> also, be not deceived. Some more unrighteous people that are not going to inherit the kingdom of God are the effeminate. The effeminate people aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. Those are men that refuse to act like men. Now, everybody knows what manly means, but some men, they want to act like girls. Some men want to act like women. Like your limp wristed sissy boys and your drag queens, because they, they, don't, they don't really act like women. They just act perverted. They act weird. They act like clowns. Yes, the, un, the effeminate, the men that won't live their life as a man, like they're supposed to, being a protector and a provider and a husband and a father, that's what men do. But the effeminate men are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. The limp-wristed sissy boys and the drag queens are going to burn because the unrighteous are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. They're going to be cast off in the everlasting lake of fire, just like the porno perverts that like to commit adultery as they look at their porno pictures. Jesus said, if you even look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart already. Nor the abusers of themselves with mankind, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, some of you know what those lustful men do with those other lustful men, and it is abuse. Oh, they say it's love. Love is love. It's not love at all. It's lust. It's dirty, filthy, destructive lust, and it's abuse. That's what those men do to each other's bodies. That's why they, they pump each other full of deadly diseases, because they're filled to their eyeballs with lust. Yeah, they don't know anything about love at all. The only thing they love is themselves. And those men that abuse each other, abusers of themselves of mankind, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Nor thieves. Thieves are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Whether you knock over a liquor store, or maybe you do some sort of a white-collar crime, or maybe you pinch money from your company, and, well, they'll never know. They have lots of money. I'm just taking a little bit, right? Thieves are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. They're going to burn burn, burn, because they deserve it. Thieves are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You should be grateful for the things that God has provided for you. Now, most people out here in the square, they, they seem to have plenty of clothes. So, some need a little bit more, but most people have enough clothes. 
It looks like most people have plenty to eat. And I mean, some people have plenty to eat. Why aren't you satisfied with what God has provided you? You don't need to steal from somebody else. People that are thieves, it's because they hate the people they're st stealing from. We don't need hate in America. You don't need to be hating people in your life by lying to people and stealing from them. And those people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God, nor the covetous. The covetous people, those are the people that can never have enough. A covetous woman may have a closet full of shoes. You know what she does when she gets a chance? She goes and buys more shoes. A covetous man, he may have plenty of uh, hobby stuff to play with, and, but he can never have enough. He keeps buying more. The covetous people. The covetous person, they may have a spouse, a spouse that's doing a good job as a spouse, good husband or a good wife. The covetous person, they want somebody else. They want something else. They can't be satisfied with the good things that God has already given them. They have to have more. The covetous peace people will not inherit the kingdom of God. They're going to be kicked off into the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone if they die in their sin. We don't need covetous people in heaven, that's for sure. Nor drunkards. Drunkards are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The drunkards, they destroy their strength. They destroy their body. No, no, no wife is blessed by a drunken husband. No children or grandchildren are blessed by a drunken grandpappy. Drunkards are not going to inherit the kingdom of God because they're wicked, hateful sinners. That's why. God gave you a body to fear him and keep his commandments. Not pour liquor in it so you pickle your liver and so you can get high. That's not why God gave you life nor revilers. Revilers certainly will not inherit the kingdom of God. The revilers are those people that hate entire groups of people. Have you ever seen somebody like that? They'll look at an entire uh, group of people and say, well, I, I hate all of them. They're all no good. <laughs> Sounds like God looking at you. But he's not a reviler. He's just. Revilers won't inherit the kingdom of God, those haters. Nor the extortioners. Extortioners won't inherit the kingdom of God, that's for sure. Kind of like the IRS. Extortioners say, you better give me some money or else. And of course, the uh, worst extortioners in our society are the ones in the pulpits. Have you ever heard that? You ever s heard some lying thief in a pulpit try to extort you, say, you better give me your money or God's going to be mad at you. You better give me 10% of your income. Otherwise, you're not going to be right with God. The religious extortioners are, the, are the, among the worst ones. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So again with the list. <clears throat> know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Now there's the good news tonight. There's the good news. See, this is Paul the Apostle talking to born-again, Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled Christians in the city of Corinth. And he tells them that they were extortioners, that they were adulterers, that they were effeminate, that they were idolaters, that they used to be drunkards, that they used to be revilers, that they used to be gluttonous people. He said, such were some of you. See, that's what can happen when you're born again. When you're no longer serving the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of your life, you're actually serving God. You're actually feeling, fearing God and keeping his commandments. Then you could be a past tense sinner, hallelujah. And such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the spirit of our God. That's what you need. And going to a church building doesn't do that for you. Being a religious person doesn't, doesn't uh, sanctify you, it doesn't wash you, and it doesn't justify you. Being in church leadership in a church building, being in, the, in a Christian band, that doesn't wash you, it doesn't sanctify you, it doesn't justify you. Going to church a million times, being a churchgoer, being a pastor, being a deacon, being a bishop, mowing the lawn at a church building, taking out the garbage, watching the children in a church building, 
That doesn't wash you, that doesn't sanctify you, that doesn't justify your soul. The only thing that does that is if you go to God in grief and sorrow, if you approach God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit because of the wicked, terrible sinner you've made yourself, and if you actually have faith in Jesus Christ and the salvation, you're not just somebody that pays him lip service, then God would be faithful and justified in saving your soul. Then you actually could be born again. Then you would actually have the Spirit of God. Then you would actually be part of the body of Christ. I'm talking about the invisible body. That's what you need. That's what God wants for you. But the only people that go to hell are the people that hate God. The sin-loving God-haters are going to burn. God wants to have mercy on them. God wants to give them salvation. God wants to wash their souls. But he's not going to force it on anybody. The sin-loving God-haters are going to get what they want. They're going to get the wages of their sin, which is death. What a shame. Why would anybody choose the wages of their sin, which is death, when they could get the gift of God, which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord? That's because they're prideful, because they hate God. They refuse to fear God and keep his commandments, which is their whole duty. That's why America is so messed up. That's why America is not great. It's full of sin-loving God-haters. They love their marijuana. They love their alcohol. They love their fornication. They love their religiosity. They love their pride. And God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. No grace for the prideful people. If you're prideful today, God is resisting you. There is no salvation in your religiosity. Going to a church building, saying, well, I was born in church. That doesn't save your soul. That just makes you deceived. You think you're righteous because of a place you go sometimes? No. See, God wants everybody to live a blessed life. God wants, that's why he wrote it in his book on how to live a blessed life. And I'm here to tell you it's got nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with fame or popularity. It has nothing to do with worldly things. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now we have a lot of people who don't live blessed lives because they don't walk in the counsel because they insist on walking in the counsel of the ungodly. That's how, how many pe so many people live their lives. That's why so many people were walking around with, with masks on because they listen to the counsel of the ungodly. That's why so many people allow themselves to be injected by, with, from a stranger with an unknown substance, because they walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That's not the blessed life. It's a life of fearing things that you ought not to be afraid of. Again, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That's right, if you want to live a blessed life, you need to stay away from the counsel of the ungodly. You need to not be hanging out with sinners. And you don't sit around with scornful people, people that scorn the good things of God. That's step one. But for the blessed man, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Do you meditate in the law of the Lord day and night? If not, you're living a cursed life. That's why your life sucks. Your life sucks because you, you have rejected the law of God. That's the blessing you need. Again, the blessed man, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's how you might live a blessed life. People that re reject, God, reject God's laws, they live terrible, pointless, miserable, hateful lives. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to be somebody that hates God. You, you don't have, somebody, have to be somebody that's living a cursed life. You can live a blessed life. That's why I'm going through Psalm 1 right now. Again, but the blessed man, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. That should be you. You should be meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. That would be a blessing. Be blessing to you. It would be blessing to everybody around you. Meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. That would be one of the major blessings you could ever have. But if you don't, you're going to live a cursed life. If you don't meditate on God's laws, what are you, what are you, what are you meditating on? The wickedness of the devil? The, the destructive philosophies of this world? 
You need to live a blessed life. Also the blessed man, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. <sighs> yeah, the wicked one day, they're going to be blown away like the chaff. Is that going to be you? You're going to be part of the wicked? People that haven't been born again? People that are still walk around in their sin like it's okay? They're going to be blown away like the chaff on judgment day. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. See, God wants all of mankind to be in the congregation of the righteous. That's what he wants for you. See, there's going to be a congregation of the righteous one day, but there's not going to be a congregation of the wicked. They're just going to be cast off into the flames of hell. I hope that doesn't happen to anybody out here, but Jesus said there's going to be many that go through the broad road to destruction. So chances are most people are headed that way today, but you don't have to end up there. You could get into the congregation of the righteous if you were born again through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. Then you'd be part of the congregation of the righteous on judgment day. Otherwise, you're going to be like the chaff which the wind driveth away. God's going to blow you off into the everlasting lake of fire and brimstone because you deserve it. That's what the Bible says. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And most people, most churchgoers in Murfreesboro, they don't care about the word of God or obeying Jesus Christ. They just love the lust of their flesh, the lust of their eyes, and the pride of life. They don't care about fearing God and keeping his commandments, which is your whole duty. That is your whole duty on this earth. Have you learned that yet? To fear God and keep his commandments. That's why you're here on this earth. If you don't do that, you're a fool. You are wasting your life. You are you are you are squandering away the gift of life God gave you if you don't fear him and keep his commandments. See, the Christian God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's only going to put up with the wickedness in this world for so long. One of, the, one of these days, it's all going to end. Does that sound like good news today? Does that sound like good news when the Christian God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to destroy all the wickedness off the face of this earth? If you loved him and feared him, it would. The Word of God says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and all ungodliness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are without excuse. The existence of God is so blatant and so plain, you're going to be without excuse on Judgment Day. You're not going to say, but God, you didn't show yourself to me. The existence of God, you're going to be without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither. We're thankful. So many people, God has given them blessings. People that have had food every day of their life, they get to wear clothes all day long. They got a decent place to sleep. They have nice people in their life, but they're not thankful to God for it. Foolishness. He's the one that gave you those good things. Now the evil things in your life are your fault. They're the fault of mankind. Like the drunkards, the people that like to drink their alcohol, sip their poison because it, what, tastes good? Is, is that an excuse for, for poisoning your body, pickling your liver, destroying your life and your relationships, wasting your family's money? Because you like to get high on your, your alcohol, drink your ethyl alcohol, poisoning yourself? And people are going to say, oh, George, is, he's got liver cancer. Well, yeah, he drank a million beers in his life. What do you expect? That's the foolishness of the drunkard. They say, oh, my Uncle Charlie, he needs a new liver. Yeah, he pickled it with, with whiskey. What do you think was going to happen? That's the life of a fool. People that smoke themselves and smoke themselves and smoke themselves, and then they say, hey, everybody, would you pray for me because I got lung cancer? Foolishness. That's because they that knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their foolish 
heart was darkened. A lot of people in America have foolish dark hearts, don't you know? You've probably heard about that. People that just fill their lives with wickedness and sin and want others to do so. Prideful people. Those are the people that profess themselves to be wise, but they made themselves fools. We got a lot of people in America that do that, don't we? People that possess, that profess themselves to be wise, but they're fools, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made unto corruptible man. Those are the idolaters. Those are the wicked people that want to worship anything but the creator, but their sustainer, and but their judge. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts. That's why we got so many sexually transmitted diseases in America, because people are given over to the uncleanness of their lustful hearts. See, if you actually had a clean man and a clean woman, there wouldn't be any diseases, would there? But because people's, because people's hearts are filled with lust, and they want to make time with anybody they can get their hands on, we got a society full of all kind of crazy diseases. Again, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And you've seen these people. They have their pride parades. They want to join hand in hand. They think they won't be unpunished because they, have, they join hand in hand. I'm here to tell you the wicked will not be unpunished just because they join hand in hand. But again, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Those sex perverts that have their pride parades every year, they dishonor their own bodies. They destroy their bodies through their lust. That's why they pump each other full of deadly diseases. They abuse themselves. They destroy one another because of their lust. Though they talk about love, but they know nothing about it. People that like to say love all the time, they know nothing about what that is. All they know is lust and abuse. And those people, they've changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even the women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. Have you ever heard about women like that? They've given up their natural use of being wives and mothers. They've gave that up to their lust and their uncleanness. That's why they're full of violence and hatred and, and disease. Because they've given themselves over to vile affections. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, which is to be a wife and a mother and a helper. They've given up the natural use of the woman and burned in their lust towards one, one toward another. Men with men. Working, working that which is unseemly. I mean, it's stuff you don't even want to talk about. They're so filthy. And receiving in themselves that recompense for their error, which was meat. Meaning, what they get, they deserve. Because when you act like that, when you behave like that, when you live after your lust, you're going to suffer for it. When you don't live right. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God that God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those, do those things which are not convenient. A lot of people do a lot of things in America today that are not convenient. I'm here to tell you, smoking cigarettes isn't convenient. It's disgusting. It's expensive. Sucking all that tar and nicotine and carcinogens into your lungs. Wasting your family's money. And then the fool will say, oh, I have, I have lung cancer. Would you pray for me, please, after I smoked a million cigarettes? Would you please? Foolishness. You smoked yourself sick. And you think somebody's going to fix that for you? And again, the alcoholics do the same thing. They destroy their body. They destroy their life. They ruin themselves financially because they like to drink ethyl alcohol because it gets them high. Foolishness. That's not what your body is for. Just because it tastes good and makes you high, that's no excuse to get drunk. Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. There's no room for drunkenness in there. If you feared God and kept his commandments, you would stay far away from intoxicating substances. That's for sure. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, 
full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Whisperers and backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, does this sound like the people of America? Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they might, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's how depraved that they can be. Not only do they do wickedness themselves, they fill their lives with evil. They live after the lust of the flesh, the lust of their eyes, and the pride of life, destroying their bodies, destroying their people whom they say they're, they're friends with. But then they have pleasure in the people that do the same wickedness. How evil is that? What we need is people to humble their heart toward God in grief and sorrow. We need to quit with this nonsense about being proud to be an American. Pride is evil, evil, evil. You need to be humble toward God that you live in a nation where you have your, you have your uh, physical needs met, where you can have a good job. You should be thankful for God for that. If you, if you live in a nation where you have enough food that you can survive on, have decent food, a choice of food, you should be thanking God for that. You should be thanking God that you live in America, not being prideful. Prideful leads to hell. Those are the people that don't acknowledge what God has done for them. The prideful people think that they deserve something, like maybe their next breath, which you don't. It's only by the mercy of God that you have anything like that.